This morning, a pressure campaign from Republicans seems to pay off, but is it proving that they were wrong about the Trump documents? Attorney General Merrick Garland appoints a special counsel to investigate how classified documents from the Obama administration ended up at the home and personal office of President Biden. And among the questions still unanswered, why did it take more than two months to disclose the discoveries after the first documents were found? Plus, the latest from Ukraine, where there's dispute over control over an eastern city and speculation that a major offensive campaign from the Russians could be on the horizon. Welcome back to Morning Joe. It is Friday the 13th. Jonathan Lemire is still with us. And Willie, since you're okay with Friday the 13th and you have no problem with it, and I'm just going to line up my pens exactly like this, you go ahead and take the first story. Now that I know this about you, it's amazing you even came to work today. You're very strong, Mika. I'm Thanks for being here through it all. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's begin now at the top of the hour with that decision by Attorney General Merrick Garland to appoint a special counsel to investigate President Biden's handling of classified material in the wake of new revelations about additional classified documents from the Obama administration discovered at President Biden's Delaware home. NBC's chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander has the latest. This morning, President Biden's handling of classified information is under growing scrutiny after Attorney General Merrick Garland announced that he's appointed a special counsel to investigate. The extraordinary circumstances here require the appointment of a special counsel for this matter. Garland naming Robert Herr, a former U.S. attorney in Maryland, appointed by then-President Trump to head up the inquiry. Garland also detailing the expanding timeline of discoveries. On November 2nd, the president's personal lawyers found fewer than a dozen classified documents at a former office in Washington, just six days before the midterm elections. And then on December 20th, they found another batch inside the garage of Mr. Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home. A location we got a glimpse of in this campaign video, where the president keeps his Corvette. My Corvette's in a locked garage. OK, so it's not like you're sitting out in the street. People know I take classified documents and classified material seriously. It wasn't until two months later on January 9th that the discovery of the first batch of documents became public following media reports. And just two days ago, another classified document was found in a room adjacent to the garage. Garland revealing that the Justice Department was notified of that yesterday. Overnight, NBC News learning one of the documents found at Mr. Biden's former office was marked with the highest classification in government, what's called top secret SCI, according to a senior U.S. official and another person familiar with the matter. Last fall, President Biden slammed Mr. Trump for storing hundreds of classified materials at his Mar-a-Lago estate. How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. Mr. Trump last night again claiming that he had the right as a former president to retain classified documents, even though there's no evidence any of them had been properly declassified. You know, when Biden is admonishing me for documents that I'm allowed to have as president, I'm allowed to have. We were allowed to take this. Uh, many presidents took things with them. He was not allowed to take them. NBC's Peter Alexander reporting there. Let's bring in former chief of staff at the CIA and Department of Defense, NBC News national security analyst Jeremy Bash, and MSNBC host Simone Sanders Townsend. She previously served as senior advisor and chief spokesperson for Vice President Kamala Harris. Good morning to you both. Um, Jeremy, let me start with you, uh, given your understanding of classification of documents and how seriously the government takes this. What do you make of what we've heard and what we've seen so far that there wasn't just that one batch found in an office, but now a second batch of classified documents found in a locked garage at President Biden's home in Delaware. Well, Willie, if you and I were to call uh, the intelligence community right now and say, hey, look, um, we accidentally, inadvertently took classified material home. It's in our house. What they would say is they'd say, put it in a double wrapped envelope and give it back to us. And literally, if you look at the training manuals that are offered to, to intelligence community professionals, there is a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. The right way is return the documents right away. The wrong way to do this is exactly what uh, special counsel Jack Smith is investigating, which is what the Trump administration, the Trump team did down in Mar-a-Lago, which is first they denied there was anything there. Then they turned over 15 boxes. 
More than 300 documents were found in Mar-a-Lago after a grand jury subpoena, after the Trump counsel certified in writing that there, were, there was no documents there. Trump alleged that the FBI planted the information there. So this is, I think, a contrast of two special counsels. And I actually think the Biden team is going to welcome the contrast at the end of the day if the facts remain as we know them, which is there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. And I think the two special counsels will analyze those, uh, those differing fact patterns. Patterns. Yeah, it, it obviously intent in the end and intent to obstruct will be what it comes down to. Uh, in its latest editorial entitled Biden Reaction to Records Probe is a sharp contrast to his lawless predecessor. The editorial board of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch writes in part this, the probe of the Biden documents is fully justified, but even a cursory look at the facts failed to justify any conservative schadenfreude over Biden's embarrassment. And Biden's cooperative response to the probe provides a primer on how responsible leaders are supposed to behave when facing legal questions. The contrast with his lawless predecessor is striking. Trump, instead of cooperating with the resulting investigation, as Biden is doing, has continued to allege he was the victim of an unprovoked raid. He and his Republican enablers clearly still believe that even as ex-president, he's above the law. The fact that the current president is making no such claim speaks volumes, volumes about both of them and about their respective parties. Simona, I'm curious how you think the White House is doing in their response. I was watching Biden answering questions, Karine Jean-Pierre answering questions, and I are they hitting it just right in terms of trying to, and would you suggest that they focus on the differences between these two cases and the intent issue? You know, Mika, when uh, the people in political communications now usually know when you are explaining, um, it, it's usually not in your favor. And I think what the Biden White House has done is say, look, this is what this is what happened. We have uh, we're cooperating with the review from the Justice Department and we will not be giving any additional details and we're going to let the review play out. And that is the in, in normal political times, I think that is absolutely the, the right thing to do. I, I think the concern from a lot of allies, if you will, of the White House, not necessarily the White House itself, is that the, the, the voters, the American people, might not understand the nuance, right? Like, the American people, there, there are people who are asking, how could this possibly happen? Not understanding that, you know, when President, when then Vice President Biden left office, he was in Ukraine three days before. Uh, he did not have a staff secretary, a person who who is the arbiter of documents. It is very easily to understand how documents could have accidentally been packed up and not neither seen nor heard from until someone started going through the files um, over the last couple of days. It is So I, I just think the lack of nuance here and the details are extremely important. And every single time this issue is discussed, the details are not front and center. And so I, I think the White House is doing what they can. And it is mm -hmm. incumbent upon, the I think, the allies of the White White House. My question would be, where is the DNC, frankly, in all of this, while the president and his press secretary are doing what they are supposed to do, the outside entities who are the political arms, if you will, and defenders of the president who happens to be a Democrat, okay, leader of the Democratic Party, in my opinion, should be more forcefully um, uh, attacking the issue and making sure the nuances are there. Yeah, so Simone makes a really good point there in terms of, though the facts are very different in these cases, there's a perception, there's a murkiness that now is in place that mm -hmm. might be hard for some in the public to discern. So Jeremy, though, I want to ask you a question I think is the number one question I've received in the last 48 hours or so. Is it now that we're, there is this matter with President Biden and his classified documents, and as of yesterday, he gets his own special counsel. How is that going to impact a possible criminal charge for Donald Trump and his mishandling of classified documents. And again, let's stress, these are two separate cases. In a perfect world, one would be, they'd be considered separately in a vacuum. But we know we're not in a perfect world. It's Washington. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's very fact dependent because prosecutors tend to make decisions about whether to move forward with criminal charges entirely on the facts of the case. And so we have an unfolding investigation undertaken by Jack Smith, the special counsel. And if he comes forward and says, look, this fact pattern down in Mar-a-Lago was so egregious, the, the Trump team 
dissembled. They lied. They hid documents. There were more than 300. We have to hold him accountable. And they make a recommendation to Attorney General Garland. And Robert Hur comes forward and says, this is a pretty straightforward commingling case. It was inadvertent. They returned the documents when they found it. There was no intent to lie. They were fully cooperative. There's no criminal conduct here. Then I think Merrick Garland is going to have to make that very difficult decision to move forward on one case and not the other. The two cases really shouldn't pollute the judgment of the other. Um, and, and they're not similar, at least based on the facts that we know them now. So, so my current you know, analytic prediction, if you will, Jonathan, is that Garland will analyze them separately, and he should. S Simone, um, I'm just curious what your first reaction was when you heard this news. And then big picture, what does this mean for the Dem Democrats? Do you think it will impact their agenda or anything moving forward? What's your suggestion on how they handle questions about this? Well, Mika, like most people, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, my goodness, not good for uh, the 1600 Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. I was like, oh, this is a rough, this is a rough day. Uh, but look, I think the reality is, is, and, and I tweeted about this, I think that uh, when we first heard of this story, I think there were a number of, you know, our colleagues in the political press that thought that there was some scandal-esque type meeting with uh, some folks at the White House and the president to decide whether or not to tell the press about these documents. And knowing what I know about my my former colleagues, I think what more likely happened is a small group of people knew, uh, and they were thinking about how can we quickly return these documents. Can't believe we found these. Let's quickly get them to where they need to be, and we will let the chips fall with they may, where they may. And if there is a review, we will we will participate in the review. Not necessarily, not any malice intent, if you will. I think the reality is is that this is a political headache, if you will, for um, the White House and for Democrats in general. But they should not allow this to deter their agenda. The reality is this is not the same thing as Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago. You know, the National Archives knew they had 13 boxes missing, asked the former president of the United States of America, did he have them, and then spent months haggling trying to get them back. Like, he lied about what he had. The two things are, in my opinion, not in the same stratosphere. And there are a number of things that Democrats need to get done. Um, uh, there is work that has been done, legislation that has been passed, and now that needs to be implemented. And I think keeping their eye on that ball will be extremely important. And frankly, I think that's what you've seen the White House doing. But again, this is where the yeah. allies come into play. And uh, I think some other folks need to step up before it becomes a bigger issue. Simone Sanders Townsend, thank you very much. We'll be watching Simone Weekends on MSNBC and streaming on Peacock. Thank you, Simone. Willie?